Phil Cardinelli here. We're going to take a look back at some of Moe's more popular Mo Monday videos. Today we're going to look at the rule of the end. Uh, take a look. It was pretty interesting. Welcome back to Mo Mondays. We got a question from a viewer basically on dual angle layouts. And he refers to the sum of the angles and the ratio of the angles, which is how big is the drilling angle in relation to the VAL angle. So we're going to go through that for you a little bit to give you some ideas. Now keep in mind that with balance holes not being in the game anymore, at least next year, drilling angles aren't going to matter on symmetrical balls. Forget it. The only thing that's going to matter is the VAL angle and the pin to PAP distance. So on symmetrical balls, you can take the sum of the angles and the angle ratio and put it in the trash can. The USB-C just likes to change things every once in a while. I've got no problem with that. Because a bowling ball with a CG over here, 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 or there, if it's a symmetrical ball, is going to roll the same because if you put it on a determinator which locates the preferred spin axis or the mass bias of the ball, it's going to spin on the thumb. So there are no ratios with symmetrical balls. Sorry. VAL angles and pin to PAP distances. On asymmetrical balls, which has the locator pin here or it has a symbol there depending on the manufacturer you're using, okay? Now we start talking about ratios as well as sums of angles. And I'm going to draw a couple of lines on here as we go through this to show you what we're talking about when we're talking about ratios and the sum of the angles. Basically the rule is you add the drilling angle and the VAL angle together on an asymmetrical ball and you're going to delay the break point. So if they add up to a lot, it's going to be a later break point. If they add up to less, the ball's going to read the pattern sooner. Okay, our standard strong late break point layout, if you have a five inch, approximately a five inch pin to PAP distance, or not pin to PAP from the center of your grip to the PAP distance, is going to be 90 degrees. 70 by three and a half, four by 20. That adds up to 90. I like to use 90, 95 as neutral. If I want to get the ball further down the lane and I got enough friction so that I don't have to help the ball come back, I could get those two angles to add up to as much as 140, for example, which means I could go 90 by 50. A 90 by 50, if you got the same pin to PAP distance, is going to have a break point further down the lane than a 90 by 30, and a 90 by 30 is going to have a distance further down the lane than a 50 by 20. So that's what we're talking about with the sum of the angles. I'm going to show you some things that you can see that you can look at to know what we're trying to do with it. So let's get into dual angle layouts and let's see if we can help you refine the ball motion for the player and for the lane. We're going to talk about layouts and how they change the shape of the ball motion. We're using an asymmetrical ball again because we have the option of moving the PSA around in relation to the bowler's grip. Now I'm left-handed but I'm going to do this like I'm right-handed. The first thing you want to do is draw the line from the pin through the PSA. We'll call that the pin to spin line because that's where the ball is going to spin if you put it on a determinator and that's how they mark it in the manufacturing. The angle of that line basically gives you a look at what we're trying to do. We're doing this for right handers, we mirror image for left, okay? If the line is like this, your grip is over here and the pin is out into the right and the diagonal line is this way, you're looking for a late sharp break point, okay? You bring this in a more moderate position like this where it's a little more vertical, you're looking for a medium reaction. You don't want to slant it towards the sharp break point or you don't want to slant it towards the roll up and, and sit look. But if you get that wet dry pattern or you get a pattern where you need to, now we got the line at this angle. 
When the line is at this angle, that ball is going to read the mid lane and roll forward on the back. That's not a bad thing to do if the lane wet dries on you. So, there's one angle, there's another, there's another. That basically is going to give you your ratios. This is a big ratio. We're talking about 70 degree drilling angles in relation to 25 to 35 degree VAL angles. Okay, this is more medium, 50 by 40, somewhere in that area. We get over here, like this, and you've got 30 by 60, or 30 by 50. So, this is going to roll up in the mid lane, this is going to be in the middle, this is going to be down the lane and kick on the back. Okay? This is great for high track players. Because high track players tend to get the ball to roll up a little bit soon. More medium players. Low track players. Spin biscuits, like I used to be referred to as. Like this type of layout. Either above or below the fingers. Okay? So that's what we're looking for. So, when you're getting this, see the direction it's pointed? Ball's going that way and going that way. Line is pointed this way, ball's going to give you the medium reaction. Line is pointed this way, the ball's going to get to the break point, roll up, and go straighter through the pins. This is for control. This is when you have to stand left and throw right. So that's how you're going to see when you do that. Now, the sum of the angles is what's going to tell you whether it's later or sooner. Okay, let me do a typical late reacting layout. I'm going to do a ball that I want to get down the lane. There's a lot of friction. I got a little bit of hand. I want to get it down the lane. So I'm going to take my Prosect and I'm going to give it a bigger drilling angle. Eh, let's say 65. We're going to pick a medium pin to PAP distance. Four and a quarter inches. It's pretty medium. And we're going to give it a 50 degree VAL angle. Okay. I'll take the standard axis point which is 5 over by 3 eighths up. That's what the automatic ball throwers will do for you. Call that standard. And I'm going to show you the rule of the N. Okay? So we've got 65 by 4 and a quarter by 50. Some 115. A little over 95. You'll notice that when I do it, I'm drawing an N on the ball. This is the simplest way to look at it. If I make that N wide, the ball is going to read the lane down there. If I make the N very narrow, it's going to read the lane right here. So this is past the break point. This is a big N. So this is, we'll call this the big N. Okay? Now, since they were very nice to give me a towel to wipe off with, I'm going to do a ball that I call rolls at your toes. Okay? 20. Use the same pin to PAP of four and a quarter by... Yeah, let's go 25. There's an N. Got this, this, and this. Narrow ends read the lane earlier. Wider ends read the lane later. That's as simple as that. It's just drawing an N on a bowling ball. Again, just to balance it out so I take it through the full. We get our standard ball thrower axis point of 5 over by 3 eighths up. 
and that's usually around 55 degrees of axis rotation and 14 degrees of tilt. So now, we're here. Huh, where'd the end go? The end's over there. Small end reads here, big end reads there, medium end reads in the middle. That's about as simple as I can make it. And I know that Brunsnick, who is the director of all these shows, he likes it when it's simple. So, the rule of the end, Mo Monday. <laughs>